Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Podcast right here on the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Bryce Lewis. And you know what we do here on this podcast. We talk about everything football and on and on. So, obviously, we have new updates coming out of the league this week about how they're still planning to go forward with the regular season. Everything just as plans that could introduce mini camps happening actually in a month. Also, we have other news we're also going to have more of a very simplistic show today in my opinion because for for most of the show we're going to talk about every team's quarterback situation it's obviously quarterback is one of the most important positions in the league uh we're going to talk about that we're going to rank every team's or not rank we're going to talk about every team's quarterback situation now obviously this won't be in full depth since there's 32 teams but maybe for a good minute or so we can talk about the situations obviously some are easier to talk some are more detailed than others so we're going to talk about all that we're also going to talk about which teams are in the running to be the worst team this year. And then we'll talk about that at the end of the show. So we're going to have all that on this slate, on this podcast, right here on the JSMC Podcast Network. But let's go ahead and get right into it. So the NFL spokesman has came out and said that he believes that the season will go on as planned and they are expecting full crowds. So that will be very interesting to see. If you haven't heard, the Pittsburgh Steelers, I believe, were the first team to actually only sell 50% of their season tickets to take precautions with COVID-19. So maybe even if the NBA, I mean, not NBA, if the NFL says, hey, you can have full stadiums, will teams still do it? Because obviously, again, the thing you got to weigh as a team and as an owner and everybody who runs these teams if we have full crowds and people start getting COVID and the NBA said it was, and, and not, why do I keep saying the NBA? This is not the basketball podcast. I do the basketball show, but this is the football podcast for the NFL. Okay. The NFL s- says you can have full crowds and you still have full crowds and everybody gets COVID. It's going to make you look back as an organization because it's like, you basically were just like, people are going to look at it as you valued money over safety. So, and then you got all these people sick trying to watch your game. Plus, even though NFL, one thing about the NFL is that since the fans are more away from the players, you never know the people who be roaming the sidelines, cameramen, we don't, you don't know who they've been around and they, you know, if they, they somewhat get close to the players sometimes, and obviously that could endanger the players then at that point. So clearly, you know, it's, it's a lot of risky business. So you might see more teams following in Pittsburgh's footsteps and going ahead and adapting things like, okay, we're not going to sell all the season tickets, or we're only going to sell up to 40-50% of the capacity of our arena or stadium based off this. So they're not sitting out here feeling like, okay, we're just being, uh, you know, negligent uh, and neglecting things that are clearly still happening in today's society and still affecting things that are going on. So clearly that's obviously... You know, a big deal, something that, you know, they'll have to, we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, obviously, the NFL also said that mini camps could begin, I believe, June 15th. So if a team wanted to have a little mini camp, usually June is a month off for the players because you had camps in April and in May. But now, since they weren't able to have any camps, of virtual workouts, now they're maybe going to allow the players and, and the teams to have camps in June mid-June and maybe for about a two-week period be able to you know get some working with the players meet with the players etc cetera, etc cetera. I'm sure they're gonna have guidelines and restrictions and all that with that and then on top of that they then still can really go with training camp as scheduled so it could really help because obviously if they get the mini camp training camp in that's obviously going to be beneficial 
that's obviously going to be very interesting moving forward as well because, you know, obviously, remember, I'm sure as many coaches and head coaches in, in general don't want – they don't want to just first get their hands on their rookies, especially because they're going to be the ones in the situation behind the eight ball more than anything. You know, they're going to be in this situation more than anything. And they don't want to sit there and, and, and keep things from happening, keep things from reaching the pinnacle. And, you know, being able to basically get their hands on these players so they feel like they have all this potential and talent and getting them where they need to go. So, because, you know, obviously that's going to be the big deal moving forward. But also, in other news, obviously, if, you, if you're if you watching this offseason play out, you're still aware of the Dak Prescott, Jerry Jones, contract negotiations, all of that. Dak is still not signed, and we have no idea if he is going to get signed, or will he have to play under the franchise tag. So, basically, Mike McCarthy said he is very confident that Dak Prescott will be in camp, and he will get confident things will work out. Obviously, for a Cowboys fan, I'm sure this is very frustrating for all the fans out there of the Cowboys, because they're like, okay... You have some people on the side of, well, Dak doesn't deserve this kind of money. I don't know why he's asking for that kind of money. You have some people say, well, listen, without him, y'all may have not been as good as y'all been the last few years. So you need to go ahead and just pay it to him. There's a lot of questionable, interesting stuff going on right now. And, you know, Jerry's the guy who breaks these checks. So, and Jerry's always, they always say, he he's he's the type of guy who always gets it done. He always you know always says he will get it done, and obviously people are going to continue to ask him because until we get any type of clarification of Dak's going to actually make it in, people are going to be wondering: okay, is Dak actually going to be in in camp potentially next month? Because obviously if they have mini camp; he won't be there. So will he be in the main camp, training camp in a month? We don't know. We we don't know if he's going to be there. And then how many preseason games could he miss? And then could he miss any regular season games? Obviously, I'm, I'm, I, I know that they expect it to be worked out by then, but obviously if that potentially happens, then that obviously puts you in a very, very bad spot because if you think about it and you're put in that position – realistically what is the Cowboys season going to look like then? What 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 is the Cowboys season going to look like then if, if Dak isn't playing? Because I don't know if they're gonna I mean listen that's one of the reasons why I believe they got Andy Dalton to have them a security blanket behind Dak but I don't know how they feel if potentially he's not going to play and can move on and move forward with the season, with the expectations that they've had. And I think that's kind of what the big thing is, really, that's going to create the issue. So it's just, it's just it's just gonna have to see what happens. We're gonna have to really see what happens with the situation. We're gonna have to see what happens with, with everything that's going on. We have to hope that it gets to a place where you, where you can you know be successful if you're the Dallas Cowboys with or without Dak Prescott. And hopefully this doesn't linger on too long because I'm sure they don't want to end up maybe missing the playoffs again or not reaching the full potential that this team could potentially reach because of just the contract negotiations that have been going on between Dak Prescott and his camp and Jerry Jones and their camp. So this is something definitely that Cowboy fans will continue to keep a close eye on and hope that it can get resolved very, very soon so it doesn't leak into the regular season 
and again affect their chances to maybe make a playoff run during the season. But coming up next, Baker Mayfield's not taking any interviews. He says it's all play, it's all play, no talk now. Get to work. I'm gonna talk about all that and more coming right up here on the podcast. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy dash football dash podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. Last segment, we discussed the NFL moving forward. With having mini camp next month, as as well as continuing to have the same plans they had for previous seasons and trying to keep things as normal, as they're expecting full crowds and they're expecting full attendance at all their games. So obviously, the NFL says we're not going to change anything unless instructed to do by the medical officials. So obviously, they're going to keep trying to do what they have to do. It, and be who they are at the end of the day. Also, Mike McCarthy, Dallas Cowboys head coach, says he is confident that Dak Prescott will be in camp and will be playing for them when week one starts and that everything will be work worked out between him and Jerry Jones when it comes to contract negotiations as obviously this has been a very lingering issue that Cowboys Nation has been having to deal with and I'm sure that they're getting very, very much tired of it. But, in other news, Baker Mayfield, obviously, is entering a very crucial gear of his career. He has been, you know, he's, he's, he's been, you know, criticized. Obviously, a lot of people think after his first year, everybody was very excited about his potential. The Browns got all those wide receivers, all this talent. Everybody thought Cleveland could make the next step the next year. And then just seeing how everything went, offensive line was clearly a mess. It was not all Baker's fault. And just chemistry with, with him and Odell and everything just was not working out. Obviously, one thing Baker has been criticized for is his maturity. 
that he is not the most mature NFL player to, be, to play quarterback. And that people feel like that has affected his performance and why he hasn't maybe reached the potential that's, that a number one overall draft pick is expected to reach. So this offseason, Baker has not really been in the news too much. And his first interviews with Browns reporters, he said that he won't be doing a lot of interviews. And he's turned down a lot of interviews because he's trying to get to work and let his play do the talking for him. Which people may look at this as a very considerable step forward when it comes to the... Browns having a successful season and for him to play better as a quarterback himself. So it definitely is very interesting to see what Baker does this year with the changes that he's making. And so, you know, Hopefully, it results in, in, in progression this season. Obviously, he invited nine teammates, I believe, two weeks ago to work out with him. Obviously, you're starting to see that with a lot of um, quarterbacks inviting teams. Obviously, still trying to get workouts and stay in shape, trying to get chemistry, things like that. And so, clearly, that's a big deal that he's able to get someone to come out and help. Obviously, that's something that people want to see. And let's, like I said, Cleveland has a lot of expectations this year. A lot of people are expecting a lot of things out of them this year. They are expected to be a good team this year. With the talent they have, a lot of people are expecting them to be a team to be reckoned with. Moving on. Into the into the future, and so it's 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 going to be very much interesting, as I said, to see what happens with Cleveland. Because remember, Freddie Kitchens, I think we all agreed was not the right man for the job. He he just couldn't handle all those personalities, and he just was put into that role in that situation way too fast and too quickly. And so, obviously, with that being known, and 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 everything like that, it's important. It's important to to understand. You know, Baker. This could be his last year as Cleveland quarterback. We 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 don't know if he doesn't produce. Odell, if he doesn't, you know, produce this year, like Cleveland could get rid of him. You know, I mean, because Cleveland is one of those teams that's just, they have a lot of talent on Cleveland. Back before when Cleveland was bad, they usually always had one of the worst rosters in the league, for the most part. Or they were good on the one side of the ball, but they were terrible on the other side of the ball. Usually with most bad teams, if they're, if they're ever good on one side of the ball, it's usually defense. And even though every time at the end of the season they won't reflect it, it's just, you know, when your offense is putrid, yeah, your defense is going is not going to be good being put on the field all the time, tired, all of that, of course. But, yeah, Cleveland has offense of talent, defensive talent, pro bowlers on both sides. It, 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 it's a team that should be good in that extra playoff spot should help them have increased their chances clearly of making it. Plus, on top of that, listen, they're playing in a very tough division. A lot of people see them as the third best team in the division just based off last year, based off history, based off we don't know what Baker Mayfield's going to do. But they could be really the second or best first team in the division by the end of the year. Because they have just as good of a roster as the other two teams. All these teams in the NFC, in AFC North are great defensively. Cleveland's great defensively. Offensively, you may say Baltimore's first, but then you'd have to put Cleveland second. Because we don't know what Pittsburgh's offense is going to look like this year with Ben Roethlisberger coming back. So, to me, I think you have to go with the, the, the fact of 
Cleveland has all the ability, talent in the world. New head coach Kevin Stefanski from Minnesota has played in a winning environment in Minnesota. You know, he he had to be responsible for with Kirk Cousins as his quarterback still getting this team to win. So, you know, clearly, with that being known and said, it, it makes a lot of sense. If Baker really puts himself in the right direction and puts himself in the right position, Cleveland has all the expectations in the world to be the surprise team in the league this year. Like, really? They have that type of talent and that type of potential. It's just about all putting it together and making it work. Because, like I said, a lot of things are on the line in Cleveland. The Cleveland fan base is tired of being the laughing stock of the league. They they want a season they can go into and say, we won. Not even just the Super Bowl. We we just, we just won. We just had a winning season. We just we made the playoffs. We actually did something we haven't done in literally two decades. Literally, that's that's what they want. So it's it's just a big it's a big thing happening right now, and we just got to see what happens. We just got to see what happens with Cleveland. Like I said, one of the best receiving cores, one of the best running backs, offensive line tremendously improved, one of the better front sevens in the league. Secondary could be their weakness, but they have some players in the back end, and it's just all about Baker. Baker has to has the concoctions to mix something together and make something big happen. Now he actually has to go out there and make it happen. Because if he doesn't, it's not going to look good moving forward. It's not going to look good at all. And a lot of people are going to hop off the Baker Mayfield bandwagon and believe that he is not the guy to lead Cleveland into the future and potentially bring this city of Cleveland a Super Bowl championship. But coming up next, we're going to start evaluating teams' quarterback positions. All that right here and more on the podcast. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco, ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info.
Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. Last segment, we talked about Baker Mayfield. How he's not taking interviews. He's turning down interviews. He's turning down discussions and talking. And he's just going to work. He's just going to be working. Uh, this obviously could be a step in the right direction for him. Showing off that he is more mature. And that he is open. To, you know, do what he has to do to get Cleveland over the hump as obviously there's a lot of expectations on Cleveland this year. They have a very talented roster. They've, they've adjusted some things that were the issues last year and they're putting Baker in position to be successful. And so it's on Baker to really come out there and produce. So obviously he's going to do what he has to do to try to be one of the best teams in the NFL and, and get team and get Cleveland to be respected again for the first time in decades. But as I told you earlier in the show, we're going to talk about every team's quarterback situation here on the podcast for the next 30 minutes or so. So three segments about, and we're just going to discuss, you know, what I think of them quickly. Uh, Obviously, like I said, there's 32 teams, so I can't just go into extra length detail. But, you know, we'll we'll give a quick analysis. Some are easier. Some I got to say a little bit more on. It just really depends. It just really depends. So we're going to get into it right now. So the first team we're going to get into is the Jacksonville Jaguars. Obviously, they moved on from Nick Foles and Gardner Minshew to starting quarterback, backing them up as Josh Dobbs and Mike Lennon. So obviously this could be a make or break for, for Gardner. Gardner is put in position where if he was able to do something with the team, Jacksonville may have to really seriously look through keeping him as the quarterback. You know, but obviously... With Jacksonville going through a full rebuild, we really don't know how good Jacksonville is going to be at the end of the day when it gets down to it. And we don't know how that would affect Gardner Minshew when he gets out of there on the field. The next team is the Washington Redskins. Dwayne Haskins, obviously, is the guy looking like he's the, he's going to be the guy going into the year with competition from Kyle Allen. And obviously, Alex Smith is still on the roster, even though we are aware that he will probably not be playing again this year because of the major eight leg injury he suffered about two seasons ago. Obviously, this is a make or break year for Dwayne Haskins. Kyle Allen was brought in just in case because he already knows the offense that Ron Rivera is running. Dwayne Haskins may need more time to learn it. So he has a guy that he knows if we had to play Kyle Allen for a couple of games, we could. But obviously, this is Dwayne Haskins show. This is his make or break year. Even though it seems like this is his second year, it's, it's like a lot of people were very iffy on him and thinks, was he ever good enough to really be the starting quarterback of the Washington Redskins? So obviously, a lot of people are going to see about if he can really get it done this year. Miami, obviously, is one of the most intriguing quarterback situations this year. Obviously, Tua Rosen and Rich Fitzpatrick. Three guys, three different journeys. Tua, obviously, the fifth overall draft pick is rejected to be the future of Miami. Ryan Fitzpatrick is the veteran journeyman who has been on multiple teams and has played well, but also played bad at times. And Josh Rosen's a guy that I feel like has never really gotten a full, great opportunity to have a chance to play in this league and be a starting quarterback after draft being drafted by the Arizona Cardinals in the first round a couple of years ago. I think that more than likely, Tua should be the guy going forward, obviously. But you have a great veteran in Fitzpatrick. Rosen's actually going to be a very, very key pog in this because Miami has people calling about him. And I think Miami should be very, very interested in looking to move Rosen and maybe get some draft picks back or something back for him. New England. Obviously, right now, they have Stidham, Hoyer. You know, they have them. We're not going to really talk about the other two guys, Brian Lewerski and the rest, because we pretty much know they're not really too much in it. It's really just Hoyer and Stidham. Obviously, this is Stidham's year to prove himself. This is Stidham's year to show people that, hey, I'm not as bad as people think I'm going to be, and this is Bill Belichick's chance to say I can win without the guy without, without Brady. But also, the Patriots may be going through a rebuilding process, so we'll have to see where that takes them as a team. Twenty Next, next on the list, the Chicago Bears. Obviously, Mitchell Trubisky and Nick Foles are going into a quarterback competition this offseason. Obviously, both of these teams and both of these players will compete for the starting job, trying to potentially be the starting quarterback of the Chicago Bears. Obviously, a lot of people think Nick Foles is going to come in and win the job from Mitchell Trubisky, but some people think Mitchell Trubisky could still fight off Nick Foles. I am one of the personal believers that feel like he's going to be in there regardless I feel like both quarterbacks will play this year if Chicago, especially if Chicago has a down year so I, I think there's a very strong possibility we'll see both quarterbacks actually playing during the season 
the Los Angeles Chargers are next as we're going to talk about Tyrod Taylor and Justin Herbert. Obviously, Tyrod looks like he could be the starter to start the season because, listen, Anthony Lynn really likes Tyrod Taylor, and Tyrod Taylor has one in this league. He's a guy who's not going to lose your games, but he's not a guy that if you need 30 a game, he's going to get you either. But he's going to be efficient, and he's going to get, manage the game. Obviously, Herbert is the future of the Chargers, and obviously, so they're expecting big things out of him when he hits the field. So obviously, it's going to be very important to see when they bring him in and make sure they're not bringing him in too soon before he's ready because Tyrod can hold the ship down till it's time. The Denver Broncos, Drew Locke, and Jeff Driscoll is his backup. Obviously, Drew Locke's in a very potent position. They have increased their offensive weaponry. They have Melvin Gordon with two with Philip Lindsay. Drew Locke had a great end to the season last year after coming in and playing. Everything looks set up for Drew Locke to be the starting quarterback for years to come, but this year is going to be crucial as he has to go out there and prove it to everybody in the league that last year's last five, six games were not a fluke, and this is truly the future of Denver, and he could be the franchise quarterback that they've been waiting for since Peyton Manning when they won the last Super Bowl. The Cincinnati Bengals. Obviously, we know what their situation is. Joe Burrow will be the starting quarterback. We just don't know how good he will be in his first year with the talent surrounding him. Now, I've said, the in terms of skill position players, the Bengals have good skill position players. Joe Mixon is a fine running back. You know, Marvin, not Marvin Jones, but uh, Alton Tate, A.J. Green. You know, there's someone else I'm forgetting, too. He's a good receiver. They also got Terrence Ross. Not Terrence Ross, but uh, John Ross. They have some weapons. Again, it's just about... Offensive line, how good is the team overall? Because this is one of the teams that some people think could hinder Joe Burrow actually being as great as he potentially could be because of the talent on the roster. Number, uh, Carolina, PJ, you got you got Teddy Bridgewater, P.J. Walker, and Will Greer. Obviously, you know, P.J. Walker is my boy from the XFL. But Teddy Bridgewater is expected to be the quarterback and lead them into the future for the next three years. A guy who has won games in this league, has made playoff appearances, He's expected to lead this this offense and, and, and play at an efficient rate that Matt Rule expects. And, you know, Carolina's a team we know has some talent offensively. And I think, listen, Teddy's a guy who it's great to see his journey, great to see him back, and it's great to see him in a position to start again and play again in this league as the quarterback of the Carolina Panthers. The New York Giants, obviously, with Daniel Jones, second year rookie guy, started, took over for Eli Manning, uh, had some had some downs, had some ups, had some very high ups. The potential is there with Daniel Jones to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league and to definitely be the franchise quarterback of the, of the New York Giants moving forward. They have continued to surround him with weapons and improving the offensive line to hopefully get him over the top. So we'll have to see. But Daniel Jones has all the intangibles you need and want in a quarterback to be the guy moving forward. The New York Jets, obviously, Sam Darnold. Listen, if he doesn't have mono... He should be fine this year. He should be absolutely fine this year. But he, he played well, even with a bad offensive line and a limited amount of weapons last year when he did play. he They signed Joe Flacco, the Jets did. Pretty good veteran backup quarterback, I would say. Quarterback situation probably very stabilized. It looks like, listen, if, if the Jets have a bad year this year, I think Gase is out, but I think Darnold gets another year to prove himself. So I don't think this is a make or break year for them at all, actually, in my opinion. And then the last thing we're going to talk about before we get into the next segment is the Los Angeles Rams, obviously Jared Goff. A lot of people are very iffy about him and don't know if he's really good and don't know if he's just had fluke seasons. Obviously, Sean McVay was has been credited with being one of the reasons why he was so good this Super Bowl year and the last year seeing what happened. You know, what what is Jared Goff? A lot of people wonder about that. And I think, you know, people think they're in a tight spot also because they also gave him that boatload of money. And I just think you got to sit there and you just got to see what happens again. The Rams are in a whole situation with their team in general with not having that much cap space and a lot of old aging players to begin with. So this isn't just a Jared Goff issue, even though all the uh, scrutiny will be going towards him since he is the quarterback. But that's all we have right here for this segment. Next segment, we'll continue on breaking down more quarterback situations around the NFL. 
Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. Last time we broke down about 12 teams for quarterback situations, quick snippets, my general opinions of everybody's quarterback situation during that time period. Obviously, we're going to continue on with it this segment and break down at least at least 10 more teams, uh, quarterback situations, and snippets and everything. So, obviously, you know, we're, we're going to get right, right into it. So, the Tennessee Titans at, at are, are obviously going with Ryan Tannehill as their starting quarterback. A guy who led them to the AFC Championship game a year ago and got a big contract. So he'll be the guy for the next few years. They got Cole McDonald, a guy they drafted from Hawaii to back him up. So obviously everything's going to be on Ryan Tannehill's shoulder. This is his second chance to be a starting quarterback in this league. So, you know, obviously he has Derrick Henry behind him and he has some good weapons like A.J. Brown, you know, to throw to. So we'll see if Ryan Tannehill can continue to play up to the standard that he set last year or will he regress and people look at this as a bad decision that was made by Tennessee, putting this type of investment into a guy who didn't particularly work out in Miami, even though you could you could break down why that didn't happen, but maybe being in a more great structured organization, a structured team with Mike Rabel could lead to very good things for Ryan Tannehill moving into the future. Cleveland, obviously, we just talked about them with Baker. Like I said, I've said it before, big year for Baker. He said, it's time to just work, do our thing instead of talking about it. So, this is it. This is it. Case Keenum's backing him up, but I'm sure if Case Keenum hit the field, Baker probably won't be there next year. So, unless, obviously, injuries, you know. But, that's that's not looking good, if that's the case. So, hopefully Baker can 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 get to where he wants to go with the team and himself, because this is a make or break year for him. If you look at his numbers from last year, he regressed. And so clearly he needs to get it back up. And and, and, and with the weapons that he has, Baker is put in position to be successful. Now the Buffalo Bills, obviously Josh Allen. A lot of people have said, you know, with them drafting Jake Fromm, could that be a message to Josh Allen? I don't think it is. I think Josh Allen just came off a year of improving again. So I don't think you can say, okay, he approved again, but we still need to get somebody else in there. Like, cause it's, when you want, when, cause it makes it feel like you're saying we're going to put pressure on him and be like, but, and, and say, okay, we're going to, we're going to make sure. And to me, I'm just like, well, remember Jake Fromm was a six round pick. Who drafts six round picks to put pressure on the starting quarterback? Like really? Who drafts a six round pick to say, Hey, if you don't get it right within the next year or two, he'll be the guy. If that's if you could say that about a first round pick, even a second or a third, but a six, I just think that's not really the case. I do think Josh Allen is a guy that obviously, like I said, since he, he's progressed from his first to second year, I think he's going to be put in position to be even better. But he is under some pressure because the team has improved offensively, and people expect to be him to make another jump this season. Obviously, San Francisco 49ers with Jimmy G. Obviously, a lot of people after the Super Bowl wanted Jimmy G out the door. I don't know why. It's, it's, it's very interesting to be a quarterback in the league. And you can tell that off Jimmy G's situation. Guy makes it to the Super Bowl, and people want him out the door. And then they're blaming, well, he didn't do that much in the playoff run. Well, my bad. Well, if you have a dominating run game, I don't, I don't know what you really want him to do. I'm tired of people saying that teams that have these elite run games and great defenses and if they were able to basically carry him to the playoff Super Bowl well he's not that good you telling me if Tom Brady had Derrick Henry in an elite defense Tom Brady gonna be lighting it up all he has to do is maybe get that good goal line throw 
get a couple of first downs, and then they'll win. Well, why is it if Jimmy G's in that situation, that means he can't, he, he's not that good. I, I, I just don't get it. Jimmy G, I think he deserves to have, to be the quarterback for the next couple of years until he actually has a bad season or proves he can't make things happen in key situations. Pittsburgh, obviously, with Ben Roethlisberger coming back, Mason Rudolph and Devin Hollidge are still on the team, but obviously I'm sure Pittsburgh fans would like them not to hit the field again. And so, Big Ben, we don't know what he's going to look like going into the season. We don't know how how healthy he will be. We don't know how much he has left in his tank. We don't know what this offense is. Remember, he hasn't really played in this offense outside of the first game of last year. He hasn't really played in this offense that much. We don't know how good he really is, really. We don't. So we don't really know if Pittsburgh is going to really make that big of a jump this year or not. Indianapolis Colts, obviously, have probably one of the most interesting quarterback rooms because they have Jacoby Brissett, last year's starter, a guy who I think can play and can be a starter, but an average starter. And, and he's probably one of the best top backups you could have. Phillip Rivers looking to prove himself, looking to show that he is still a franchise quarterback and he can play and, and win games and lead a team potentially to the playoffs. And then obviously Jacob Eason, I think a lot of people are looking at third round selection or fourth round selection. Maybe, you know, he could be the starting quarterback moving into the future. But obviously the Colts have also added a lot of talent. So obviously that's going to make a difference as well. The Arizona Cardinals, obviously, we know about their quarterback situation. Kyler Murray is the guy, rookie of the year, looking to make another jump in year two to to, to, to really, you know, stand out and be great. Some people say they didn't expect him to be as great as he was. If you look at his numbers, 20 touchdowns and 12 picks, okay, that's okay. But for a rookie, that's good. And then don't forget, he had four scores on the ground and rushed for over 500 yards. So... Obviously, this is a true dual threat quarterback. He can beat you with his arms and his legs. Hey, Kyle Murray also could take it to the house, too. So don't think if he ain't throwing 40 touchdowns, he ain't getting no touchdowns anywhere else. He could have eight on the ground if he if he really wanted to. Cardinals, like I said, look like they have their quarterback. They have the guy who fits that Cliffs Kingsbury's offense perfectly. And it's all set up for them to be successful going on to the future. Obviously, Minnesota with, with Kirk Cousins. You know, he's the guy. They gave him another extension this offseason. They said, we are willing to stick to the Kirk Cousins experiment. I mean, they made it to the playoff in the divisional round. They don't, you don't make it to the divisional round and then say, yeah, we got to get you out of there. So, Kirk obviously is going to be the guy for the next couple of years. He's a capable starter, can put up big numbers. But obviously, you know, Minnesota knows how they want to play the game with Kirk. Run first. You want to run first. And then set him off off play action because that's when Kirk Cousins is at his best. And you don't want to put any more pressure than you have to on him to win you games. Because when you've seen when he's in the big lights and there's pressure, he usually falters under the pressure. Obviously, Philadelphia with Carson Wentz. You know, they're, they're a team that they just... They made one of the most interesting quarterback moves of the offseason going after Jalen Hurts. And a lot of people were confused about why. But knowing you have a franchise quarterback in Carson Wentz, some people think, is this potentially them replacing him just in case he continues to get hurt? Obviously, that's that scenario, even though the deny is there. You can't deny if, if Carson got hurt week five the rest of the season and Jalen Hurts gets in there and he plays his, his butt off. That means, oh, Jalen Hurts is going to be the guy. You know what I'm saying? So obviously, that's what's going to make this quarterback situation interesting. So we're going to have to see what happens with Carson Wentz and the team and see if he can stay healthy moving forward into the future. Because obviously, if he doesn't, that Jalen Hurts argument and that discussion and all that will continue to rise and continue to go up and continue to be talked about. And then the last thing we're going to do with this segment is the Las Vegas Raiders. Obviously, two quarterbacks, Derek Carr, Marcus Mariota. And listen, Derek Carr had one of his best years last year. But it still just doesn't seem good enough. For John Gruden. And John Gruden, they've said, have not always been sold on Derek Carr since he's been in Oakland. And so he really could move Derek Carr from that spot. And he could really move Derek Carr from that position. And, and he not end up being the starting quarterback move forward. And we'll have to see if that really ends up actually happening. 
So we'll have to see. Marcus Mariota could hit the field this year if Derek Carr does struggle. Because John Gruden may not be hesitant to pull that plug if he sees fit. And if he doesn't feel like he's going to get the top or the best chance to win with him in the lineup. But coming up next, we'll we'll finish up talking about QB situations in the next segment as we discuss the last 10 teams that we're going to dis- that left in the league that I've not gotten to in their quarterback situation moving forward. All that right here and more on the podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Football Podcast. Last segment, we continue to break down more quarterback situations around the league. As you know, it's 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 been interesting. You know, obviously looking at every quarterback situation, everybody has their own unique QB situation. Every quarterback situation has a story. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens this season. And if any of these quarterback situations that we've already discussed already could be dramatically changed by season end. But obviously we're going to continue on and talk about more quarterback situations here around the league, different situations. And we're going to get into the Atlanta Falcons. Obviously Matt Ryan is the starting quarterback. Matt Schaub is the backup. Obviously Matt Ryan still put up another 4,000 yards season last year. 66% completion percentage, 26 touchdowns. And, you know, listen, the Falcons' offensive line was a big issue last year. Matt Ryan was sacked 48 times. Obviously, they they wanted to improve that. And he's remained, for the most part, steady through the last few years. He is probably, like some people consider, borderline tier one, top of tier two quarterback. And, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting. You know, to see what happens with the Falcons moving forward in their quarterback situation. As those questions will start to pop up, when will they start to look for Matt Ryan's successor? Obviously, Detroit is number nine. Here, where Matthew Stafford, obviously, is the guy. A guy who some people feel like, obviously, he's been a quarterback for for Detroit since he's been to the league. He's had great moments. He's had good seasons. He's made the playoffs before. Never won a playoff game yet. But he still feels like he just feels like he's underachieved throughout his career. And that's why he's never looked at any year as like a top guy. He's looked at as overlooked a lot of the time. Remember, he he's a guy who's played well for this team, who's done some good things, but just has struggled. And... If Matthew Stafford gets hurt, you see what Detroit looks like when he played. They were one of the best teams. Then he got hurt. That ended up them falling off and having one of the worst seasons they've, one of the worst innings to a season you could ever have. And we'll have to see, even though Matt Patricia's, Matt Patricia's also on the hot seat this year and everything. Tampa Bay, obviously, this is Tom Brady first year in Tampa with Bruce Arians. Obviously, everybody's excited to see what happens. Obviously, he's going to a supporting cast in Tampa that has a much improved core of, of, of weapons with Mike Evans and, and Chris Godwin and Rob Kankowski and OJ Howard. This team looks loaded on paper. They look like they, they would definitely be a team to be reckoned with when it comes to trying to take a potential Super Bowl run. And Tom Brady is considered the GOAT, the greatest of all time to the quarterback position. So we, 
we get to see how does he do in his next year. Obviously, I think he's 43, 42 now. And we'll have to see how he can do. We'll have to see how he can do. Obviously, Green Bay's quarterback situation became very interesting when they drafted Jordan Love in the NFL draft this past year. People think the time is clicking for Aaron Rodgers. We Two, three years, maybe he'll be his time left in Green Bay as Jordan Love is now the guy who they probably project to be the new guy, the new starting quarterback of Green Bay is the future. Obviously, you know, if we're talking about now, Rodgers obviously, outside of Devontae Adams, has a very limited receiving core, it seems like, and we don't really know how that's going to affect him and his play this year. Obviously, his numbers did go down, but it just feels like he's not the same guy that he used to be years ago, but it also doesn't help that his team isn't surrounding him with the best weapons they could potentially surround him with. Number six is the, the, the Dallas Cowboys. Obviously, we discussed his contract discussions earlier. Obviously, they're not anywhere close. Obviously, this is scaring a lot of Cowboy fans because I don't know, like I said, how anybody feels about Andy Dalton being the quarterback of the of the Dallas Cowboys starting week one. And, and is Dak really going to be willing to hold out a long time to get money? That's going to be something that's that's really big moving forward. So it's just going to be interesting to see what happens. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens with Dallas. Hopefully Dak can get his contract done and play week one, but we'll have to see because he seems very evident on getting a certain number. Even though, listen, Andy Dalton's not a bad player. He can put up numbers and he can win you games. So this might actually end up being not as bad of a situation as it potentially could have been if they had another type of backup quarterback. Obviously, the Houston Texans, Deshaun Watson's one of the best in the league. He's a guy who was named to the all-clutch team. He's a guy who made Pro Bowls, put up big numbers, only 24 years old, dicing up everybody. But obviously, a lot of people were not really worried about Deshaun Watson. They were worried about Bill O'Brien and him ruining Deshaun Watson, keeping Deshaun Watson from reaching the potential that he's destined to reach. That's what I think a lot of people are worried about. He finished seven of QBR this year. He had five game-winning drives. I mean, this man is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. It's just them taking away, you know, DeAndre Hopkins and everything, you know, what what is Deshaun going to look like this season? That's going to be a big, big question moving forward with the talent around him because it doesn't look like they approved offensively. It seems like they got worse. Obviously, the Saints and the Saints here, but Drew Brees is the quarterback. Clearly, clearly a team that has playoff aspirations, Super Bowl aspirations, division-winning aspirations. Obviously, Drew Brees, 40-year-old quarterback, Pro Bowl guy. It looks like his last year to play. Obviously, they signed Jameis Winston to give him a year to train and to, and to develop behind Drew Brees with Sean Payton. And obviously, we've talked about Taysom Hill getting a lot of hype for next year to potentially be the next starting quarterback of the States as Sean Payton is very much in love with Taysom Hill. But if we're talking about the starting quarterback situation for this year, Obviously, James Winston would be a great backup just in case something happened to Drew Brees. It could help him become maybe another Teddy Bridgewater. But at the same time, Drew Brees, if he stays healthy, we expect Drew to be the same surgeon that he is on the field, picking apart defenses and getting the Saints, hopefully, with better playoff success than they've had in previous years. Baltimore, obviously, with DeMar Jackson. I mean, he's the reigning MVP. Only You only expect him to get better, even after last year. A guy who... Obviously, still people are going to be questioning his success. If he if he dominates the regular season, okay. But the question is, is his playoff success. If he just starts to not play well in the playoffs or not be as great as he could be in the playoffs, that could be what affects Lamar Jackson's, you know, stature with people in terms of how good he truly is in the, in the NFL. Seattle obviously has probably one of the most securest QB situations because Russell Wilson, I mean, listen, he's an MVP contender. He's a constant MVP contender, a guy who is elite, who is who is going to be the reason why Seattle continuously always has a chance year after year to make the playoffs. Russell Wilson is truly a guy who is the art of quarterback. He is what you would want to look up to 
in terms of work ethic, fundamentals, how he handles the media, how he plays the game. Very smart player. Does a lot of good things. And I think that helps. I think that helps. And that's what makes him one of the best players in the NFL, in my opinion, and just one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL as well. And then, last quarterback situation, obviously, is Patrick Mahomes. I mean, again, he was the MVP two years ago. Super Bowl MVP this past year. Patrick Mahomes is one of the best, is, is, is solidified in a lot of people's mind as the best quarterback in the NFL. The guy who will carry the league into the next decade. And listen, Chad Hetty's the backup, but you never really expect him to hit the field. You expect Patrick Mahomes to be Patrick Mahomes. And if he if he plays like he's played the last two years, that's going to be the reason why Kansas City is going to be right back in the Super Bowl pitcher again this year because of how talented and good he is on the field at all times. But coming up next, as we complete our quarterback situations, we're going to talk about seven teams that Bleacher Report lists as the seven teams who could be the worst team in the NFL next year. All that right here and more on the podcast. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Back to the GSMC Football Podcast. Last segment, we finished up our quarterback breakdowns of every quarterback situation in the NFL. Overall, as you can tell, every team, except when you get to the top teams, like the super duper top teams, like Seattle and Kansas City, all have what have some type of a storyline or a question at quarterback in some regard. Quarterback is a forever revolving, you know. It's ever evolving. You know, the quarterback's never a steady, stable position in terms of just steadiness of what it's going to be unless you have that just elite guy. Every time it's more just you're good, but if you have that one bad year, the 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 the, 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 the thoughts of replacing start to come into the picture. They start to actually come into the picture. But now we're gonna get into some some talk about bleach reports list. Of seven teams they think could potentially be the worst team and end up being the number one overall draft pick at this season's end. So we're going to get into all that right here. And we're going to talk about the New York Jets as their first team at number seven on this list. Obviously, the Jets are a team that a lot of people feel like can go in either direction. They have the potential to be a dark horse team in the playoffs, or they have the potential to still be one of the worst teams in the NFL. Now, based off what Breacher Report says, it's just a matter of what happens with Sam Darnold, but also, you know, off the line, if the off the line has truly improved from last year. Are the receiving core better? And also, we don't know how much of a, of a dogfight is going to be in the AFC East. But one thing's for sure. If they don't reach expectations this year, and they happen to be the worst team in the league, you know good and well Adam Gase is out of there. Adam Gase is under the hot seat this year. He's under some fire. He's under some scrutiny. He needs to make sure that this team reaches the expectations that have been set by Joe Douglas, the first the GM of, of the Jets, because I'm sure he is not looking at what happened at the end of last year when they went 6-2 and two down the stretch and thinking, okay, we're going to go 1-7 again to start this year like we did last year. So the Jets have to remain competitive at least throughout the year. And and almost, if, if, if they went 9-7 and seven and didn't make the playoffs, that might be good enough to save his job. But anything less than that, if they're not even close to the playoff picture at the end of the year, Adam Gase is out of there, and the Jets will be restarting. But I do think Sam Donald would still be the quarterback in that situation with the new coaching staff coming in. 
Number six, you know, the Chargers. Obviously, the Chargers, they they obviously, from a talent perspective, they're one of the better teams. But they are playing in a very tough division in the AFC West. We don't know how good Justin Herbert is going to be when he hits the field this year. And we we don't know how long Tyra is going to be a starting quarterback. There's a lot of there's a lot of uns, unsureness that like the Chargers aren't a, like of the of the Chargers aren't good this year. It's not like they're a bad team. Like they'll probably be one of the best worst teams if we do have one, but. It's just they play in a tough conference in a tough division, and it just is just it's, it's a lot. It's just a lot at the end of the day, and you know if they're in the AFC West, West basement, that probably means they didn't have a winning season for the most part, and we don't know what that's going to mean moving forward potentially. Now I don't think that they're going to particularly be the worst team in the league. I don't think that's going to happen, but I just think. In terms of they want to make the playoffs, that's more unlikely to happen than them not be, being the worst or them being the worst team in the league. At number five, obviously Detroit. Clearly, remember, never forget when Jim Caldwell finished nine and seven his last two years in Detroit, they fired him. Matt Patricia's first two years, six and ten, and three and twelve and one. This is a shame that Jim Caldwell, after finishing ten and six with the Colts and nine and seven winning records, get fired. But Matt Patricia has been just terrible, and he still has a job. So clearly, if he has another terrible year, he's out of there. No ifs, ands, or buts. There's no feasible excuse to keep him if they lose again. There literally is none. He has to win. He has to win. If he doesn't, he's out. He's out. Simple as that. Simple as that. They put a good offseason together, though. They've made some adjustments. They've made some changes. They've upgraded some positions. And if Stafford can stay healthy, we don't know what Detroit's going to do this year. But if they struggle, Patricia is out of there. And they definitely have the potential to be the worst team in the league. The Washington Redskins. Obviously, we know the situation. They'll only go as far as Dwayne Haskins takes them. That's That's been the most obvious situation here. If Dwayne Haskins ends up being the guy, they won't be. If he ends up not being the guy, there's a very strong chance they will be the worst team in the league. And listen, his natural ability isn't a doubt, Mr. Haskins. It's just a matter of him getting the offense down. And, you know, listen, Haskins knows a lot of pressure on him. So, we'll have to see. We'll, we'll really have to see. If there's any glimmer of hope, the last the last two games he had four touchdowns and zero picks and a 72% completion percentage. But outside of that, we don't know what we're, what we're going to get. So Washington definitely has a chance. The Cincinnati Bengals. Obviously because with Tyler Boyd and A.J. Green and all them, you don't know. Again, they're, they're, in, a, they're in the toughest division in football, I think, outside of the NFC South. And it just feels like they're just, it's just they just happen to be in a tough conference, a tough division. And that's what's going to make them the worst team. Now, you would hope they wouldn't because, you know, Joe Burrow, and, and literally we don't know how Joe Burrow is going to fare this year. Obviously, you don't think it's going to be bad, but you don't know if it's going to be good either. You, you really just got to see and wait and see. Listen, I don't think Joe Burrow's doomed or anything, but we we don't know how the Bengals are going to look. And honestly, if their defense and offensive line doesn't come back and be better, it's not going to look good for them. Obviously, Carolina is another team. But for me, you know, Matt Rule is a guy that has a lot of expectations on him to rebuild this Carolina franchise. They have some pieces. They have star running back Christian McCaffrey. They have DJ Moore. They added Teddy Bridgewater. They added Robbie Anderson. Offensively, 
they added some talent. Defensively, they made all their draft picks on defense after losing a lot of guys like Luke Keekley to retirement, Mario Addison, Gerald McCoy, Datari Poe, Eric Reed. They're going to have first-time head coach, first-time coordinators, and with Corona. It, we, we don't know. Carolina could be one of those teams that starts off bad, but it's better late. Because of something like this, usually because they have to, because the process isn't as fast, they're not not able to teach as quickly. But I think they're definitely again one of those teams that if they were gonna be bad, they wouldn't be the worst bad team. It wouldn't be like they simply just don't have talent. It'd just be a matter of a lot of different circumstances that came into place. And then the last team, and I think everybody has been projecting them to be the worst team, is the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're rebuilding. And they don't have a lot of talent around Gardner Minshew. They don't have a lot of talent on defense and offense. They've stripped a lot of the talent. And it just looks like they're just they're not planning on winning this year. And they would be my pick as well to be the worst team in the NFL this year and potentially hold the number one overall draft pick in the draft. Because I, I just don't see them winning more than maybe two or three games to me. If if they win more than that, I think and I think that's more because Gardner Minshew plays better than maybe they expect him to play. And that gives them an extra few games, and it makes you a little curious. Okay, what if we kept them with a better team? But for the most part, I think Jacksonville definitely would probably be more likely, in my opinion, the worst team. But that's all we have for you today on the GSMC Football Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for giving me time during your day to listen to me so we can talk about football, discuss football things and different things happening around the league. I hope you enjoyed this show. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Also, don't forget to listen to our other amazing podcasts on the GSMC Podcast Network. And don't forget to go out there, wash your hands, stay safe, wear your mask, everything like that. Thank you, and have a good day. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program